Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. And today we have a Night End compilation. Game number one of the compilation will be between Night End and Bly on Mech Depot, the latter edition. In the bottom left hand corner of the map, we have the red Protoss player. It is Night End! The Romanian Protoss player from the clan is Imba. That's a pretty nice logo. I like it a lot. And in the top right hand corner of the map, we have the blue Zerg player. It is Bly. All right, so Bly here. Very, very well known Ukrainian player. Zerg, strong, aggressive, very well known for good performances in tournaments and the like. On the other side, we do have the Romanian Night End, who played Undead in Warcraft 3 professionally and was his start with esports, and then basically hopped on over to StarCraft 2 as soon as it came out. He's been with Fnatic. Let's see. Who else has he played for here? Fnatic for a while there. Actually, it doesn't show all of the clans he's been in. I know there are a couple more. And he did live in Korea in 2012 for about half the year, up until DreamHack Summer. So he's done a lot of training in Korea. Very, very solid Protoss player here, and it should be interesting to see how he performs against his opponents today in this Night End compilation. So, hatch first into an extractor, into a pool for Bly. His hatchery is just about done. That pool going to finish up here around the same time, which tells you the hatch is first because it has more HP it has to build. In that situation, the probe is really aggressive about scouting here for Night End. He's running all over the place, checking for a third base, checking to see, is that spawning pool done yet? Did he know? He didn't know the pool was up yet, so that's actually pretty good information to know. Some Sloverlord scouting from Bly, and yeah. All right, so Night End checking a pylon in the bottom right-hand corner, just in case some Overlord drops are coming. He wants to be able to see those, and the pylon does provide some very nice vision to this corner, which is generally pretty neglected by Terran and Protoss players. It's hard for them to see it. And as a result, Zerg's can be pretty aggressive there. So transferring some drones over to the natural base, working on a queen here at the main, working on a queen at the natural too. Bly's doing all the things you want to do as a Zerg player in an early ZVP. Cybernetic score just about done for a night end. And a Zealot on the way, surprisingly, going for the Zealot. I don't know why he's not making an Adept. I guess maybe he's worried about Lings coming out sooner than he expected them to, but uh, Zealot's not going to be able to hold this wall either. You need another pylon here, night end. Uh, is that even going to be enough to cover that with a Zealot holding the line? I don't know. I don't know. And where are you going, Zealot? No, no. Oh, Zealot's working on hacking down these unbuildable rocks. But there's going to be Lings here, man. There's going to be Lings here soon. And getting inside your main base with Zerglings is not a good thing. Though I did just recently post a video on Twitter of Hero having Rogue get some early Lings up against him. So Lings against a Protoss player like this. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but it was an incredible, incredible thing to see. So, Adept now is out. So, early Adept plus Zealot versus Lings. Not bad. Not too shabby. These Lings get in here inside the mineral line. But Adept following probes fighting too. And that's it. Lings die. No probes get killed whatsoever. Oh, I lied. Where did... Maybe it was... Was it a scouting probe? Might have been scouting probe. No, that's scouting probe. Ah, oh, those Lings got a probe? No way. I missed it. All right, fine. There was one. An Oracle being built by Night End. A fairly good staple when it comes right on down to it against Zerg. Just forces them to respond. Oh, look at this Overlord scouting by Bly. He's like, what up? I'm just I'm just hanging out, seeing exactly all the things that you're doing. You don't have any units that can shoot up, so I'm pretty much free and clear here. No pylons in the main base for Night End either, surprisingly enough. We usually do see those, especially in ZVP, but... Well, more, more in PBT, actually. Anyway, this Oracle is out. This Oracle is done. This Oracle is heading across the map. This Oracle's name is Bridget. She's the girl next door you like, but can never get her biggest secret. She's actually a disguised Protoss. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Tassadar. All right. That's the Maybelline jingle. A little bit of a take there. Queen stabbing away at Bridget here. Bridget just cannot catch a break. The Queen count is already five for Bly. <laughs> That is not good for oracles. And a pretty big swell of speedlings coming across the map here, too. Is Bob the Zealot going to be up to the task? Lag TV named this guy. It's a good name. It sticks well, I think. So two adepts and Bob the Zealot with a photon overcharge available if necessary. Actually, is there a mothership core? There is not. Either way, this number of lings, not enough. Not enough. Just 11 of them. Maybe with some drop lord play, but none of these overlords are in position to do that. And I think they're all still Overlords here. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep, they still definitely are there. 
on the way from Bly. Ling's checking to see are there any bases I don't know about. Just making sure they have an idea of what's going on. Bridget and friend here. Going to try to knock down these Zerglings. And a Void Ray pops out of the Stargate to take out the Overlord. No more free scouting for you. Zerglings trying to take out these Adepts and Zealots. But oh, the Oracle DPS. Way too much. I think they got an Adept or two there. But man, the Oracles overhead really helping with that battle. And yeah, you might say, I want to use Pulsar Beam on drones, Protoss players. But no, no you don't. I don't think you do. Not in that situation. Saving your units is probably a little bit more important. And Bly just throwing those Lings away on these two Zealots. I mean, that was like three, three Zerglings against two Zealots. Not great. Not amazing. Another Overlord dies to this Voidray. Voidray feeling very pleased about himself. More Lings out. Again, Bly is aggressive. He is an aggressive Zerg player. So far, not working out too well for him, though, I would say. 700 resources lost compared to three for Night End. Lings trying to go after this third base, which is warping in. But again, there's a Voidray. There's a Mothership Core. There's a pile of Photon Overcharge. There's just not enough Lings. If you had, like, 40 Lings, maybe, you could pull it off, but... Fourth base coming in for Bly in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. we got two gateways here at the third base, too, just to help against Ling attacks. Kind of zone them around this way where the army is instead of letting them get up around the top side and cause problems there. Double Oracle trying to sneak on in. Maybe the queens are away, but no, there are three queens here. And they're going for it anyway, but Transfuse is really great. A revelation tossed down. That's kind of the Oracle's give-up message is if they throw down a revelation, they're like, all right, fine. Can't really kill any of your stuff. Although sneaking back in here to the natural base, losing Bridget the Oracle. Friend takes some shots there too. Couple, couple drones die, five to this point have been killed. Zerglings once again trying to engage at this third base, but there are so many zealots. Plus one attack is almost done. Charge is coming in too, and Storm being researched by Night End. Storm against Zerg is just a brilliant idea. I like it against Terran a lot too, especially if they're going bio. Too few Protoss players get Psionic Storm, in my opinion. It's just good. It's a really good spell. I rarely see a Protoss player who gets Storm, and it just turns out to be a horrifically bad idea. Bly is getting a Hydralisk Den. Bly is getting Banelings. All right, so Hydra Baneling against his Protoss opponent, getting a fifth base, too, here at the seven-minute mark. Pretty impressive macro style here from Bly. And some Zealot holding a Zealot on a Watchtower, but where is the crux? Where is your army, Night End? He's working on another robotics facility, so he's going to have two. Yeah, he's going to have two of those. He also just warped in an Archon. Well, warped in some High Templar and made them into Archons is more like what he did. So interesting that he's not actually using the High Templar and saving up energy for Storm. He's actually got Archons here, which is pretty good. Oh, Mutas are out for Bly. I did see the Spire. didn't realize he'd made any Mutalisks yet. He's got five of them. I don't know where they are exactly, but the move speed looks pretty similar here for Oracle. 5.6 to Mutalisk. 5.6, yeah, exactly the same move speed. Mutas going after this Void Ray and going to be able to get it. How many Mutas can't it get though? Zero. Good micro moving the wounded Mutalisk back. And here comes an Archon Zealot attack into this fourth base of Bly. He has got a couple Queens here, but that's not enough. And some Lings here. That's not enough. And an Oracle supporting too. Oh boy. Mutalisk trying to kill some of these Zealots moved across the map. But the third base is, or the fourth base rather, is gone. Fourth base gone. A couple Zealots coming up here. A bad place to be just because there are a million Zerglings. No upgrades for them yet, but plus one melee attack. Is coming up. Yeah, fourth base out. Nicely done. Nice little attack there from Night End. I don't, these Lings, I feel like they could have done something about that, but instead, no. He's just going to hold this high ground and wait for Night End to try to come up to the top here. Mutalisk still chasing Zealots around, which is just bad for Zealots. They can't hardly see them. The Mutalisk's way up there. They can't shoot up. They can't even throw rocks at them. It's just, it's a very scary existence to be hit like that. All right, so fifth base of Bly is now the new fourth base. It's 66. 266 Harvesters. Mutalist flying on into this third base. Not Photon Overcharge is definitely a thing. Double Photon Overcharge is definitely a thing. Have we lost a Mutalist to something? Yeah, we lost one of them. But we have four. So yeah, you'll see this a lot with Zerg players. Making four to five Mutas in the early game just for harassment, then switching over to something else. The Mutas not going to be the crux of the army here. But going to do some damage and at least make... The Protoss player, be aware of flying units on some level. Trying to kill some of these probes. He's killed four, but uh, cannon fire killing another one. And just down to two mutas, which is not nearly as good as five or even four, as it turns out. Secondary Oracle has six total kills. I'm not sure if any of those are drones. Yeah, only seven drones have died so far. Resources lost. Looking a little bit different now, where Bly has ended up losing 32,000 or 3,200 resources compared to 21. Or we'll make that 25. Woo! As that Oracle gets picked off by Hydralisks from the ground. Any upgrades at all for these Hydras? No. Plus one melee attack is done. Getting Infestation Pit. 
Replacing that fourth base has a pretty big army here to defend it. Niden's going to try to attack it here with some zealots, but that is pretty much the entire army of Bly sitting here. Although they are leaving. Oh, they're accidentally going to scout this. That's fine. Banelings, lings against zealots. Pretty good combination. Forced to retreat is Mr. Warp present, but guess that has... Yeah, I was going to say. Hydro, let's accept good DPS. So that's out. Thank you for trying. Lurker Den for Bly. Upgrading that Hydro, let's then to a Lurker Den and getting some spines somewhere. Ah, up at his fifth base. Which is kind of on the front lines and probably a solid target for Night End to attack. Fourth base warping in for Night End. Got cannons coming here too. And Immortals, Archons, High Templar. This is a very gas heavy army. Yeah, 3,400 gas in this army for Bly compared to 2,100. Or for Night End, rather, compared to 2,100 for Bly. And he's going for it, but there's Storm and Archons here. This is a really good composition to deal with what Bly is trying to make happen here. The Storm and the Archons alone is just terrifying against Hydro Ling. Their DPS, or their rather their HP is so low. Baneling's trying to get those High Templar. Nope, not going to happen. And Bly just really can't stay still for too long because then the Storm gets in. He's kind of trying to kite away here, but he really wants to threaten this fourth base and just can't do it. Zell is trying to hold the Zell like a watchtower there. A bunch of Hydra sitting here for Bly though, so no, not allowed as it turns out. Hydra's getting rid of pylons above this fourth base. The high ground harassment from the player. Actually sending the army up to deal with these, but then the big time attack at the front. Banelings are in the back here. They really should be engaging. Photon overcharge. Archon storms are really good against these Banelings. They're not connecting with anything at all. Zerglings dying here too. Archons just splash damaging on everything biological. Can the Banelings get a hit on these High Templar? No! Turning them into an Archon to survive with Storm 2. That was an amazing hold from Night End. Excellent job. Archon out on this creep. Night End decides it's time to push. He's feeling pretty good about things. There's a Greater Spire and 10 Corruptors on the way for Bly, though. That's not good. That's real bad for Night End. Also getting four Lurkers, just, you know, just for good measure is Bly. Do you not have an Observer with this army? You should really have an Observer with this army. He's making one. Did he lose one? No, he's just never made an Observer. Wow, he skipped Observer. That's crazy. That does explain why the creep spread is looking so nice for Bly anyway. All right, Archon Immortal Templar here. And again, the Immortals are basically for the Lurkers, specifically. If they can hit them. No, 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 no. High Templar, no. What was that? No. Oh, the High Templar wandered right into those Lurkers and all of them died. That is how many? That is nine dead High Templar. And Night End is down to zero High Templar. That was crucial for Bly to get that thing done. Observer has joined the army for Night End. That's good news. Small attack here at the fourth base of Night End is held off. Once again, fairly expertly, I'd say. Only six probes have died and only seven drones. Warp Prism running around. Zergling. Pretty much mass Zergling. Oh, picking off more High Templar. Are you kidding? That's 12 High Templar that have been killed. Bunch of lings here inside the main base. Goodbye. Photon Overcharge getting rid of them. Again, maybe 10 total probes have been killed so far. That was totally not worth it for Bly. 14,000 resources lost for Bly compared to 9, maybe 10 for Night End. It's still 5 bases to 4 bases. Warp Prism does get scouted by the one remaining Mutalisk. Wow, what scouting? What scouting? And some Zealots come in here, but... It's just not enough, is what it is. Warp Prism's going to die. Uh, all of these Zealots are going to die, just with Queen and a couple Hydras. No big deal. No big deal. No upgrades to these Hydras still. I am really shocked that Bly's not getting any upgrades at all. Night End trying to sneak on in here to attack this fifth base. Killing Creep Tumors. Lurkers on the low ground. A bit of a problem. And there's Broodlords out, too. Oh, boy. Broodlords out. Lings here to attack at this fifth base, or fourth base, rather, again. For Night End. Attacking, retreat attacking is Night End. He gets rid of that fourth base for the second time in this game. He's running for these Broodlords. He doesn't have anything really that can handle this. The Archons are okay if you can get directly under them, but there's Hydra support, there's Queen support. No. No, making two Stargates is Night End. Can he transition into Tempest fast enough to handle this? He doesn't see Broodlords that much in ZVP, but. Bly. Bly is one to do them. Archon's getting picked off, trying to retreat. Getting stabbed in the back by Broodling. Down to 41 hit points. Down to 35 hit points, but still alive. And will regenerate that shield pretty quickly. Fifth base warping in for Night End, And it's sixth base coming in for Bly, too. He's replacing that fourth and getting a sixth down in this bottom right. As far away as he can, pretty much. From the Protoss player. That's how Zerg want to do. They want to expand away from their opponent. Broodlords are still pushing. 
from blind. These queens are on slow mode because they're off creep. And ah, oh, this fifth face is gonna die. No. Oh, so Markon's getting trapped by Broodlings too. A lot of kills on this dude. Okay, five. But trying to get out more than anything else, but it's not gonna happen. Yeah. He's dead as the fifth base explodes in a giant blue electric flame. Still pushing his Bly, 169 to 169 supply. Voidray's in production, kind of like the Voidray, but this anti-air from the Queen group. It's okay, too. Fourth base under direct assault. It's time to counterattack, says Night End. Losing my fourth base, not good, but Brutalers are slow. So if I can win this base race, this game is absolutely nuts. Baneling Nest gone here at the natural base. Evolution Chamber is going to die, too. No upgrades. Not that Bly, I don't think it was planning on doing that, but... Whatever. Basically a mortal here against Ling Hydra, which is not what you want if you're Night End. It's gonna say that. Not what you want. Some Zealots coming in the backside. Lurkers against Immortals. Pretty fantastic. In most situations here, Immortals gonna try to crush through these Lurkers with the detection, but no, not happening. Broodlords going after this third base of Night End. The fifth base up here was cancelled there too. This is turning into quite an insane journey, ladies and gentlemen. Zealots at the natural base. You know what? Might as well go up inside the main. Lurker Den gonna die. Hydra's getting built, dying immediately. Trying to come from this backside. The Zealots need to help with this so bad. Zealots, get up there. Get up there and assist. And they do, and that forces the Hydra's away from this location. Which is what you want. Broodlords are still crushing it here at the third base. Nothing really opposing them whatsoever. Bly is trying to oppose. That's what he's doing. Killing creep tumors and going after the Hive. Oh, there's a single Mutalisk here. Our one Muta trying to be a hero. Zealots need to get back here and protect these Immortals so bad. 29 kills, 16 kills, and 14 kills on these Immortals. And they're still living. But these two Mutalisks that are out. Oh, there's several Mutalisks now here for Bly. This is not good. This is not good for our Protoss player. Can he finish off the Hive? Zealots plus the single Immortal. Going to be enough to take it down. This Immortal damage is real, real good, especially with that plus two attack that he has. And the Hive is down, losing the Spire, too. So Bly is replacing the Spire, rebuilding some bases down here. His army trying to void right up against these queens. Broodlords are still alive. Ugh, Bly's done such a good job at keeping those alive. This game is insanity. Wow. I know a lot of you are going to be like, you should make this epic. And maybe, maybe I should. Depends on how this finishes. Oh, feedbacking all the queens. What a play from Night End, Gosu. Gosu for sure. That anti-air is gone, and the Void Rays are in a lot of trouble. However, somehow there's a flock of Mutas now. I don't know when these guys came into play, but that's actually a really scary number of Mutalisks. These guys have Storm. They do have Storm, the Templar. Mutalisks going to fly in under the main base. We have a total of 13 of them. 13 of them uh, against 7 Void Rays, and actually going to make these into Archons. Archon to deal with those mutalisks. I cannot. This game. This game is crazy or nuts. All right, maybe I will. Maybe I'll throw this as an epic cast just for game number one. Just for game number one. We have more coming, by the way. Got to keep track of the results up there in the top right. I haven't seen these games. I don't know how they turn out. I mean, this could just be Night End performs admirably in a loss, but don't know yet. All right. Broodlords with Infestor support. Oh, and that's the good game. That's the good game. Uh, why, though? I guess the Infestors were scary. They didn't have anything, though. They didn't have... That might have been a premature leave from Night End. If he gets in here and he takes down these Broodlords with the Void Rays... I don't know. I guess his mining was toast. He was long-distance mining from places. Didn't have enough money to rebuild a base. And Bly technically was on, like, four base economy. Which is not good, but... Mm. Okay, so there it is. Admirable effort in a loss by <laughs> Night End. We're going to give a Bly a 1 next to his name and move on into game number 2. Let's make sure resources lost is up. 27,000 for Night End compared to 28 for Bly. A lot of dead stuff, but made it happen in the end. Kind of a pseudo-base race that Bly just played very well. All right, game 2, next up. Welcome back to the Night End compilation, everybody. This one will be a game between Night End and Glucksek. Glukskex? That is hard to say. Glukskex? That umlaut. Is that a long U or a short U? I'm gonna go with Glukskex. Alright. And Night End. Alright, in the top left hand corner of Abyssal Reef, the latter edition, also known as the Fishy Map, it is the Red Protoss player, Night End, from Izimba. 
And in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we have the Blue Terran player, Glukskex from PT. I don't know what that is. Don't know what that clan that is. But regardless, European server Grandmaster player here, Glukskex. We'll see how he does against our Protoss hero today. I just... Okay, so there was a discussion on the channel a couple days ago where people were like, Protoss win rate feels like it's really, really low. And you know what? I think it is. It is, compared to the other matchups, for sure. It's not abysmally low. Blizzard does a really good job making sure that it stays within a certain reasonable amount of wins and losses in every matchup, which is hard to do. There are three races to balance, you guys. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but there are three races in StarCraft 2 that need to be balanced continuously, and nobody needs, you know, nobody can get too good or too bad, and I don't, I don't really envy David Kim or the guy who replaced him all that much. It's a really tough job. So yes, Protoss is winning the least against both Zerg and Terran compared to the other way, if that makes any sense. But it's not abysmal. It's not like 10% win rate at the highest levels. It's, I mean, 40-something, right? So that Night in lost that game won. It was a really great game, and we're seeing a lot of those, right? We're seeing a lot of great games on the channel recently where Protoss plays their heart out. And plays extremely well. That Neeb versus Scarlet game was just super duper high level. Neeb playing as well as he can. And it just sometimes ends in disappointment. Is all I can say about that. So, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I need to start finding Protoss wins, I suppose. Just for all y'all. Just for you Protoss fans. So you don't stop watching, right? So you're not like, why are... Well, Falcon only shows Protoss losses, which I can understand. I get it, you guys. I feel ya. I feel ya for sure. Alright, I was going to name this Reaper, but this Reaper is boring. And just patrolling back and forth here at the natural base. So, you know what? No, you don't get a name. Too bad. Only adventurous Reapers get names. You move out there, you try to kill stuff, you scout, you get a name. But you stay inside your main base and huddle there for warmth and protection, you do not. Do not. Okay, Night End going for a robotics facility for his tech of choice. Here's about three minute mark. Got a second base, as does Glukskex. Glukskex. Someone's going to translate that. It's going to be something super profane, and I'm going to be really embarrassed. That's what's going to happen here. Working on marine production is Glukskex. He's got a factory just about done, too. Going to get a widow mine out of that and a starport. So some kind of a widow mine drop here from Glukskex. And the Night End is going to have pylon placement at the ready. Got one here and here, covering both sides of his mineral line. Beautiful. Got one here in front of his main base, kind of covering his mineral line there, but not super well. But I assume the next pylon that is made will be towards the back or maybe to the side here a little bit. You just want to have pylon coverage if you're a Protoss player. That's all I'm saying. Oh my gosh, the Reaper came over here and immediately died. I don't think he killed that probe, but I'm not entirely sure. Sorry, man. Missed it. You just, you took too long. You took too long. I got interested on this side of the map instead of your side of the map. And by the time you decided to move on out, it was too late. It was too late, amigo. Observer coming out from Night End, which is interesting because in game number one, he completely skipped Observer. I guess maybe he feels like against Terran, he needs to know what's going on a little bit more. So yeah, there's the medevac. There is a Cyclone. I kind of like Cyclone against Protoss, especially with the Stalker count as high as it looks like it possibly could be from Night End. Stalkers take that extra damage from the Cyclones. Which makes it good. Makes it real, real good. Of course, Cyclones themselves take extra damage from the Stalkers, so it's kind of a bit of a trade-off here. So no Widowmine in that medevac. Very surprised. Where the heck is the Widowmine? Oh, it's walking by himself. By this motionless shark shadow, but if we can actually reveal that portion of the map where the shark is he'll start moving but you know what no is he over here he's gotta be over this way right yeah he does he does all right gluk skex is here with marines with a widow mine with a cyclone with a medevac and he's gonna try to get some stuff done there's no third base for night end which it looks like what gluk skex is trying to threaten but nope so he just heads on up to the uh, natural base instead with a Cyclone in the lead. Going to try to take down that pylon, first of all. But there are four Stalkers here. I don't know about this. And an Observer. The Widow Mine's not engaging in this battle. He's actually back here at the third base. So, okay. That's fine, I guess. And pretty good hold here so far. Just with Stalker. The Marines are a problem. A Widow Mine shot might assist with this. Getting a shot off on that Widow Mine. Too smart to get baited. And Marines in a straight up fight. Cyclone here too. Taking that damage. And done. Widow Mine fired on a probe did kill a probe that's okay you can send another probe to build this third base no problem so pretty great hold there i would say lost a couple probes but no stalkers 
in exchange for three Marines and the Cyclone and the Widow Mine. Excellent job by Night End there. Observers out. On the other side of the map here, checking to see if Glukskax is going to expand anywhere anytime soon. And so far, no. Is he working on a third command center? I don't see one. Really don't see one anywhere here at all. Marines getting healed on up by their friendly neighborhood medevac, which did take some shots from the stalkers. So that's not great. And I didn't get to work on upgrades. Double Forge here tells us that. Getting Blink for his stalkers. Such a great deal. And his third base is about 50% complete. So Glukskax is working on a third command center inside his main base, but it is inside his main base. When it finishes, he has to upgrade it to normal command and then lift it and then land it. So definitely economy favoring Night End at this point. Maybe not officially, but he's ahead. He's ahead in economy a teeny tiny bit. Throwing up some pylons in this bottom left hand section. I guess he could put a fourth base here if he wanted to, but the pylons are alone right now. Yeah, I would say expanding here is a good idea, especially with pre-set up pylons. Maybe the Mothership Corps can go defend that. Instead of defending the natural base so far. Look at these pylons too. Is he just checking for drops with these? I feel like maybe he's checking for drops and for attacks that come along. He's got pretty good map coverage actually. Observer here, observer here, observer here. And then the pylons. Yeah. I don't think Glukskex can send an attack Night End's way without being spotted. So I like this. This is pretty great. Yeah, you're probably going to lose the pylons at some point. But that's okay. I think you can live with it. And check it out. Does end up scouting this. Sees exactly when this is moving out. And what direction they're going as well. This observer going to catch them as well, I think. Yep, just catching little glimpses of them. The medevac's flying right over it. Shark Shadow now moving. And an army's going to respond here for Night End. It's not a very big army, though. I don't know about this. Stalker Sentry against this many tanks and this many Marines. Seems problematic. Guardian Shield is up. That helps. Zealot trying to get in there, but does not have charge. Charge is about 50% complete. And working on Colossus. Which is great against this many Marines. This is just Marine, I think. Are there any Marauders? There are four on the ground. Immortal here helping SCVs up here for some reason. I guess they were going to build bunkers maybe, but pretty good force field. And Glukskex is forced to retreat from this location. I really think Colossus' presence would be helpful for Night End right now, but not here yet. Working on it. Working on it as fast as Protossly possible. Chrono boosting it out. Uh, yes, is definitely Chrono boosting it out here. So Colossus with Extended Thermal Lance, very nice. Extended Thermal Lance, however, still far away from being finished. And Glukskex has his third base running after the third base of Night Ends, obviously. But it is 54 to 66 Harvesters. Night End has a nice lead on that worker count. Liberator production begin beginning for Glukskex here as well. Liberators in the sky. They can fly twice as high. Photon Overcharge is up. Oh, and one of these cannons is in range of that Photon Overcharge, but does get taken down. The pylon is gone. Tank survives. Gonna shell these pylons very, very nicely from their position. Goodbye, pylon. Piece of it flying up to the sky. Or the surface, I mean. Archon's in production. There is a Colossus Extended Thermal Lance about 15 seconds away, which feels like an eternity when this is happening to you. Fourth base warping in for Night End, despite all of this aggression we're seeing from Group Scouts. Which I appreciate, man. That's way impressive. That's way to go. Way to go, dude. Is he waiting? He's got to be waiting for extended thermal lands before attacking. Although, tanks, 13 range, still outrange Colossus, even with extended thermal lands of 9. Not ideal. Us, third base might just die. This is a really strong push with plus 1, plus 1 stimmed Marines and Marauders. It is gone. Losing the third base. Terrible news for Night End, but the Colossus is out. The Archons are here, too. Not using Storm, though. Does he have that upgrade? No. Is he working on it? Ah, uh, no. No, he's not. Concussive Shell coming in. Plus two, plus two for Gluk Skex. Getting those dang upgrades. And three base to three base, but he doesn't know. He might know about this this base that Night End is working on, because he knows about the Assimilators. And he's like, why would you build Assimilators if you don't have a Nexus? Excellent question, Gluk Skex. That's why you're a GM player on the European ladder. Can tell you that much. More Liberators joining the party. Liberators have been a bane in the Protoss existence forever since they were introduced. In Legacy of the Void, I think I'm going to say that. Ever since they were introduced. Widowmine's burrowing at the front, being very patient here as Glukskex, which seems... I don't know. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Yes, it does. Colossus trying to burn down these Marines. Zealot's getting in here too. Zealot's right on top of everything. Not really working about... Worrying about Liberator attacks, trying to get them with Stalkers and with Archons here. No, Colossus down. Due to Liberator fire, Archon splash damage against this bio does get target fired to some extent. Already has four kills. 
And but does oh and picks off the Metavax. Nighten wins that one. He had some losses, but it was a convincing victory for him for sure. Seven thousand three hundred resources lost for Nighten compared to six thousand. Well, maybe seven thousand one hundred or two for Glukskex. Got a fourth base being constructed here, continuing to make Marines and Marauders, getting plus one air weapons, getting that plus two to plus two we mentioned previously, and replacing his third base pretty much when he needed to. There was Night End. Zealots, Stalkers, Immortals, Archons. This is the composition we have chosen. Additional High Templar here. And Storm is getting started for Night End. He's got plus three ground weapons too on the way. Long distance mining from this third base is Night End. 62 to 67 Harvesters. Glukskex is looking okay, you guys. With that Harvester count, with that fourth base coming up too. Oom. Mm. Home. I guess that's the sound. I suppose that could be the sound that that makes. All right, moving out again is Glukskex. He's got his Marines. He's got way more Marauders this time, eight of them, making one at a time to the five Marines, getting advanced ballistics for the Liberator Defender Mode range, and working on plus three, plus three at 11 minutes is actually really good timing for Glukskex, especially considering that major attack that was going on. That would have distracted a lesser player, right? He would have forgotten about plus three, plus three, but nope, not this guy. He is ready to go. All right, attack coming up this way. Once again, Observers are scouting this very nicely. Nida knows exactly what's coming. Colossus, new Colossus. Chasing this bio away. No tanks this time, just Marines, Marauder, Medivac. No Widow Mines either. I feel like you almost need something else. Liberators at the very least. But I guess having lost five so far, he's a little gun shy. He's got three. He's got two more on the way. I don't know where those three are. Where are they being rallied? Ah, right here. Right here at the fourth base. That makes sense. Luke's exercise to retreat and come back with a different army composition, if in fact he can. So looking pretty great, 60 to 67 Harvesters, Night End, sitting here at four bases versus our Luke Skex player. Working on that plus three attack and that plus three armor too, is that what that is? Yeah, ground armor level three for Night End. And it's time for him to attack now. So he's coming in for the first time being really assertive against this Terran player. And Defender Mode Circle's getting set up. Make Night End pull back a little bit. That's good Night End, or that's good. Good Defender Mode Circle placement here where you can't really get at the Liberators because there's these rocks in the way and there's a cliff in the way. Night End gonna attack a different direction. Once again, Defender Mode Circle's making that difficult. Glukskex really zoning out the Protoss army with these Circles of Doom. Stalker's at plus three attack though. That's pretty great stuff against Liberator. Oh, he put it down. Gonna put the Circles up over on this left side. Is Night End gonna go? Nope. No, he's still feeling a little bit cautious. I think he can get through here. I really think he could. Liberator's not quite sure what they're doing and going for it. There's a storm that hits more of his units than anything else, unfortunately. In full retreat is Gluk's Gex's army. Didn't get the Liberator Circles where he wanted them. Decided to pull back to the safety. At least attack at a base. Single Zealot somehow makes it here to the fourth base. He was attacking a Planetary Fortress, which is suicide for him. Single Liberator setting up shop here at the natural base with that extended range on the advanced ballistics. Doing all right. Can really only cover one of these mineral fields, but already has three kills, which is amazing. Night end. Thinking about it, still thinking about it. Another Liberator moving out for that harassment while these engagements, while this dancing is going on. Let's just say it for what it is. Glukskex moving in, moving back, left, right, doing some cha-cha-cha, that kind of stuff. Liberator flew into some cannons here at the third of night, and that's not good. And Photon Overcharge gets rid of the one at the natural base too, so not the greatest harassment thus far. Fleet Beacon warping in for night end. I like that. I like a fleet beacon. Single Marine gets murdered by Colossus. There are four Colossus here with plus three attack is pretty good. Pretty amazing, especially with all this bio here. But the Marauder count continuing to climb. 26 of those now, 43 Marines. 286 supply. Glukskex is maxed out. And another base warping in for Night End. Might as well go for a fifth. If the Terran player is not going to move out here. Is he sacrificing those Zealots for no reason? I feel like he was trying to free up some supply there. Maybe for Tempest. He is getting Tempest. I don't know about Tempest and Liberators, you guys. This has been argued back and forth on the channel comments from time to time. Just don't like it. New Oracle going to show up and reveal most of this army. There it is. There's some revelation on a big section of it. Anyway, it does give you small amounts of vision around you, so you can kind of see where the army is. Even if you don't hit the whole thing. Trying to come up here with Storm's Widowmine Shot. Oh, big old Widowmine Shot. 
Storm's getting rid of some of this bio. A lot of dead bodies lying there. Say that much. And sneak it up this left side is Glukskex. Where is he going? Where is Glukskex going? Trying to kill a zealot. That's fun. Are you trying to harass a mineral land that doesn't exist yet? Possibly. They are not stim attacking. That's for sure. Sending two Colossus to deal with this is actually kind of funny. I was going to say, Colossus by themselves, maybe nuts. All right. Marauder, but cannon support with Zealot and Stalker support. Upgrades are plus three, plus three for everybody. Working on plus two ship weapons is Gluk's X. Marines and Marauders still holding their own against these Stalkers. Again, if all things are equal, Marines and Marauders absolutely wreck Stalkers. It's not even close. you got to be careful with those. Zealots are better at absorbing their damage. Chasing them from behind with that charge. Might actually hack these guys to death from the rear position. And there we go. Night End attacking once more. Glukskex trying to take a fifth base here, but actually no. Army completely out of position to save that thing. Instant death. Army was attacking up this way. And going to try to pick off some of these medivacs. Oh, really overstimmed here is Glukskex, though. That is not ideal for the Terran player. Liberator is trying to join the party here. High Templar getting taken out. To sneaking around. No, oh, the Liberator circles are gone. He's trying to tempest these things down here. Glukskex might have overextended a little bit. These Marines and Marauders have a lot of red and yellow on them. Sure, they might get this fifth base of Night End. Or this fourth base of Night End, but I don't know. The Liberator's taking shots. The Stalker's on top of them. Tempest from distance here, too. The army pretty much getting evaporated. They try to get the natural base. No. Whoa. That was a little bit of an overextension, I would say, from Glukskex. Another base coming up here. One, two, three, four, five. That's his sixth base. He's trying to do, trying to create it to an orbital command. There's a Zealot hacking away, though. He'll get there. At some point, it's 177 to 118 total supply. Night End looking pretty, pretty good. Losing that base was not good for Glukskex. He is starting to mine out his third base. His natural and main are already gone a long time ago. And Stalkers and High Templar ready to move. Ready to move. Marauders getting rid of these pylons and then losing their own lives as a result. Yeah, sneaky scouting pylons. Stay alive for quite a while, I would say. Zealots in the mineral line here of Glukskex. That is 24 zealot or SCVs that have died. 41 probes, though, so it's 48 to 30 harvesters. It's just this army composition pretty good from Night End. And Glukskex having a hard time coming back from losing most of his army there. He's making marines and marauders. Let's not get it wrong here. He's got 16 and 15, respectively. But I'm not sure it's going to be enough. I think Night End might have this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, coming in with his fully upgraded, except for shields, Stalkers, Colossus, Tempest, Planetary Fortress is no match for this. There are some Immortals in here, too. Planetary Fortress is gone. Good storm on this bio along the left side. Getting rid of them, and is it another base race? Glukskex heading up. Looks like he's going to try something of a base race here. Colossus just burning everything down from distance. 11 kills on that one, 8 kills on that one, 9 kills. On that one, and three on this Colossus needs to up his numbers. Those are rookie numbers. Third base gone. Yeah, this is base racing it. Glukskex heading on in to <laughs> this Nexus. Gone. Fifth base, toast. Going to try to get to the natural base here, too. There are some Vikings just in case the Colossus come back, and what they always say is never base race a Terran. But that's what Nighten has chosen to do. All the SCVs running for their lives here. Going to try to get some mining done. At this new 6th base along the left side, but I uh, don't know, no, Terran player having a great time inside the main base of Night End. Taking out robotics facilities, Stargates gone, Cybernetics Core, Nexuses. This is official base race territory, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, I think this is going to have to be an epic compilation. First one of those. First one of those, that's for sure. All right, main base is in shambles for both players. Glukskex is targeting robotics bay, Twilight Council, tech structures. For Night End, both players are severely, severely supply blocked, though, by about 40 each. 40 supply each, which makes it really hard to build anything. And what we have is what we have. And it's 13,000 army value for Night End compared to 4,100 uh, for Glukex. So, no. Not working out for the Terran player at all. He is delaying the inevitable. He's killing a lot of stuff, which is definitely something you want to do. But Night End has these bases mining. I don't think they can do much with them. Most of his production facilities were up there inside the main storm, keeping this bio away. These five High Templar are pretty brave of them. Are they out of energy, though? I think one guy has enough for a storm, maybe. 
And that's it. Glukskex with the Rage Quit. His final base gets scouted. And Night End is victorious. Let's give him a one next to his name in the top right. Does beat the Terran player, Glukskex, in 20 minutes and 24 seconds. I Karumba, what a game. What a game. Resources lost here. 23,400 for Night End compared to 32,000 for Gluk Skex. Looking all right there. Really good back and forth game. Liberators lost with 17. I think that was a huge deal. Losing those is a problem. No Tempest died. No Tempest died. That was also nice. 121 Marines. And without those Liberators, you're going to have a hard time. Hard time against a Protoss player with this composition of Archon, Immortal, Zealot, Stalker, Colossus. With the upgrades that they did. So great job by Night End getting that win. We'll come back with game number three for Night End in just a second. Welcome back to the Night End compilation. Night End is one and one at this point. And game number three will be on Acolyte, the latter edition. And it will be between Night End and Rail. In the bottom left hand corner of the map, we have the Red Protoss player. It is Night End from Mizimba. And in the top right-hand corner of the map, it is the blue Protoss player, Rail. So not Rail again. Who's a Zerg player? This is Rail. And this is Night End. So a PvP. We're tossing into the middle of this compilation here. I did forget to mention previously, Night End is, I think, the first pro player that ever sent me replays to cast. I approached several different players to try to get them to send me stuff and just didn't really get much of a response. But Night End at the time was like, you know what? Sure, here you go. And I linked his Twitter, which you can find in the description. Linked his Twitch. He used to Twitch stream a lot more back then. He hasn't Twitch streamed in a couple years now, at least as far as StarCraft goes. He's done Overwatch a little bit, but he's still mostly a StarCraft guy. And really, everybody's dabbled in Overwatch, it seems like. Except not me. Not me. Can't do the first person shooter stuff anymore. If there was a campaign, I probably would have gotten it. But the fact that it's solely multiplayer and solely throwing you in against people who are first person shooter players i just there's no interest there can't get into it can't do it this only blizzard game that i've just had zero interest in sadly enough because it is pretty and people say it's fun but just i can't do it can't do it all right so pvp in general is pretty much the same build although check this out rail is one basing it he's one basing it double gas whereas night and double gas is not even quite done yet and his cyber core not even close to completing. Whoa, is he skipping Cybercore? Night End, what is happening? He is probe scouting, which is good. He'll see the lack of a Nexus here from Rail. And then I pretty much have a good idea as to what's going on inside. But actually, this is a wall. Can he get up here? He scouts the lack of a natural base and can't get through this. Interesting. All he sees is a Cybercore. And the tech's going to be back here. This is a Stargate opening from Rail. So Night End needs to be prepared for this. It is a very fast Stargate off of one base. Naiden knows that there are only a certain number of things that can really wreck him in the situation. So if I was him, I'd probably try to get some detection, first of all. Can maybe get a cannon or two, and then just go Stalker in case it's an air attack of some kind. Ah, now Rail is expanding back in his safe location. All right, so that's good. And actually, I forgot. I had a bit of a brain fart there. I forgot the safe location is back here. So Naiden did not know. That Railgun didn't have a second base yet. He didn't know this was effectively a one base opener. Oh, this is very strange. And it's a double Stargate from Rail. So yeah, double pumping stalkers is Night End. Excellent job there. Getting a Mothership Core here too. Chrono boosting that out. With a pylon available for a photon of a charge if necessary. And a pylon at this natural base. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. But if I was Night End, I'd probably be getting one of those at some point. So Phoenix production. I expected Oracle. I 100% expected oracle here but instead it's going to be phoenix off of one stargate anyway what the second one's going to make i don't know but we're moving out mothership core moving out across the map what do you do oh she's going to scout that's what she's here for but she's going to get caught out in the open oh can she go home yeah she's got mass recall available to her so if this phoenix starts to murder her too hard as the phoenix is going to bow, bow, bow. at least forcing some energy off this mothership core would be real nice because that means no photon of a charge later on. So either Naiden has to sacrifice this. Or else not have enough for a photon overcharge later. Okay, so delayed as long as he could. That was real good. Mothership Core is here and needs to wait a few seconds, about 15 seconds, for a photon overcharge. So Phoenix is going to be able to get some scouting in. At the very least, these stalkers are patrolling back and forth, waiting for the Phoenix to come in and cause some problems. And getting stabbed away by the Phoenix. Excellent job. Another Phoenix. Actually pulling back here too. So yes, double pumping Phoenix 
Night End is making his own Phoenix, but I don't know about this. I mean, the Rail has the advantage. He got a head start. The the count is currently 3-0, to zero, whereas Night End is starting to double pump now, but continuous double pumping here from Rail. So I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've seen this in a PvP before, where both players are just trying to mass Phoenix as fast as they can and get the biggest Phoenix flock available. That is kind of hard to say, actually. Phoenix flock. Phoenix flock. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. Just trip me up a tiny bit there. Glowing jellyfish. Jellyfishing around. I do love glowing jellyfish. I don't know what it is. It's just pretty. Look how pretty it is. It's gross. I'm sure it would sting me to death if I had the chance. But it doesn't because it's imaginary. Because I don't live inside this here video game. Who's attacking stuff? What's going on? Mothership Core got to be doing something. Ah, killing her own pylon so that army can get out. Which seems nice. Third Nexus on the way from Night End. And really not much else going on here. Is that a third Stargate? Oh, Night End kicking in the third Stargate. Whereas Rail is still on two. He's still on two and not making another one. So that might actually be a way that Night End's Phoenix Force could get some stuff done here. I like it. I honestly do. Oh, he depowered his cybernetic score by killing that pylon. That's funny. He probably should have killed this one instead. Left the one on the right. That's okay. Probe Scout to see third base for Rail. Not yet. Oh, he's trying to block it. He knows that Rail doesn't really have much that can attack buildings. He knows that Phoenix count's going to be high, so he chucks that down. This is a great move by Night End. As he's going to let it finish. It's going to delay. There's the Photon Overcharge, and it is go down, but does force a Photon Overcharge out of the Mothership Core, and then the Nexus is happening. But it's behind. Night End's third is already done here. Let's check that Phoenix count. It's 9 to 12. Nine. Railgun is only down by 2. 10 to 12 now. Once again, triple pumping off of three Stargates compared to the two that Rail is working on. So this Phoenix flock is pretty big for Rail. But where is Night End's? His also looks similarly large right now. It's 12 to 13. That's why Rail has one more. But his Fender's advantage will kick in for Night End here. This is going to be a really big Phoenix versus Phoenix battle, which if I've seen this in a PvP, it's been a long time since I saw one. So here we go, trying to move on in to do some damage, but guess what is here? Phoenix versus Phoenix! <laughs> what the chaos! I don't even know who's winning, honestly. Is anybody target firing? Let's take a look. Whoa, Night End won that convincingly. Wow, and Rail's out! He just lost his entire army in a Phoenix versus Phoenix battle. Night End lost 9, and Rail lost 14 Phoenix. That's crazy. He was down to 3, Night End had 6, and the economy was higher here too for Night End. He had 10 more workers and an additional base. Up on his opponent, Rail recognized what was going on and decided to tap out there. So that was a lot of buildup from one Phoenix versus Phoenix battle, which was a lot of fun, I have to admit. I mean, that was crazy, crazy, crazy Phoenix battle. But uh, that's going to be it for game number three. We'll give Night End a two next to his name. He is in the lead against his opponents. And we'll come back with more in just a second. Welcome back, StarCraft fans, to game number four of the Night End Compilation. Here on Interloper, the latter edition, in the top left, we have the red Zerg player, Barcode. And in the bottom right corner, we have the blue Protoss player, Night End. Uh, alrighty then, another ZVP. Oh, a 12 pool from the Zerg. Wants to get some early aggression out there. And Night End's preparing for a gateway expand. Let's see how he can hold it off, if he can. Protoss versus Zerg is a pretty hard matchup for Protoss these days, so we'll have to wait and see. Just one quick plug for my Patreon, patreon.com slash falconpaladin. Even if you pledge us $1 a month, I will love you forever. No, really, that's what the reward tier is for $1 a month. I will love you always. Ah, all right, and drone scouting too is barcode heading on down. I like this. I like to see what's going on here. Night End sees the quick pool, sees no gas, which is even more telling. 
and says, all right, what's going on here with my Zergi opponent? There's not an expansion here either. This drone might be going for a proxy of some kind. Looking at patrolling back and forth here. Not going in for the scout whatsoever. Not trying to see what is going on. One gas from Night End. He's going to go up here and possibly try to wall, if at all possible. And the drone coming in. And, oh, trying to throw down a hatch right here in the front. <gasps> he, oh my goodness. He's not letting Night End wall off here. Oh, that's what this hatch is. So the lings are going to get up. The hatchery is going to make it so that Night End can't actually wall off. I think he's going to cancel the hatchery so the Lings can get in. This is going to be a very, very tight situation for Night End against this barcode player on the GM ladder. And here come the Lings. And do we get a cancel? Do we? Oh, we don't even get a cancel. It's not even a wall. Oh, that's even more brilliant. Not even a wall here. One Zealot is out. Okay, one Zealot with these probes is going to be pretty good stuff. Pretty good positioning, actually, by Night End. The Lings are stuck outside. If the Zealot can hold this. Oh, Bob the Zealot using the hatchery against the zerglings no surround for you three zerglings running around oh they do get back in there's another little gap right here <laughs> that's amazing more lings joining the party the probes don't like this at all the probes didn't like the fact that there are more lings but guess who shows up a new zealot a new zealot and look at this not losing a single thing so far is night end this is brilliant on his part he has killed how many zerglings seven zerglings and not lost a single thing zealots and probes, and this hatchery is getting zapped down, getting zealoted down. Zealot can hold this, Zealot can hold that. There are some drones here, but I just don't know that it actually matters. Gonna try to throw it on a spine crawler. Oh, and Adept is out too. Night End under pressure. Oh, and there's a good game! Night End under pressure. What a brilliant finish to his compilation. Lost a single probe during that attack and killed 10 lings. What? What a play from our Protoss guy today. Phew. Fantastic. So we'll give him a three. That is a three. He lost game one in a very hard-fought PvZ against Bly. Won the rest of them in very interesting fashion each time. I like this. I like this from Night End. More, I say. We should. You should see more. But excellent job by the Protoss player. That was one of the best holds I've seen, honestly. And really unorthodox attack by Barcode here, too. And just that Night End was cool under pressure, spending his money well teching up well, making zealots when necessary, going for an adept when necessary, and then following up with a stargate too. Man, excellent job. Excellent job by him. And that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.